let's just talk uh, about the Prime Minister's response. He's always vehemently denied that he was involved personally in um, the evacuation of animals and uh, animal shelter workers from Afghanistan. His defence has moved from this is total nonsense to this is total rhubarb. Yeah, well, he always treats um, the public with disdain, doesn't he? He doesn't come up with a proper uh, denial. He comes up with just these kind of exorbitant phrases. Remember, years ago, there was that one, this is an inverted pyramid of piffle. Uh, and it turned out, in that case, that the inverted that the lie was him denying the lie, if you see what I mean. Um, look, uh, uh, the problem for the Prime Minister is that the evidence is really now stacking up in black and white. We've got a letter from... Uh, Trudy Harrison, the Prime Minister's uh, uh, parliamentary private secretary at the time, uh, his bag carrier, um, saying that she's acting uh, on his behalf. You've got emails um, from the Foreign Office uh, saying that the Prime Minister has authorised the evacuation of the animals. Um, you've got emails saying that the Foreign Secretary is going to get clearance from the Prime Minister. Um, you've got, or from Downing Street rather, to be more precise, you've got emails uh, uh, you've got emails showing which i think newsnight have shown um of the of other foreign office officials making uh, um making it clear that downing street is engaged in this issue um it, it, you know it just stacks up um, and every single time the prime minister says that this is untrue there's just another revelation that comes around the corner uh, he should come to the house of commons um in an, in, in one way this story doesn't matter, except it really does. Because at the time of the evacuation, I, like many other MPs, had hundreds of names of British, British citizens and relatives who was, and people who'd worked with the British Armed Forces in Afghanistan and were therefore very, very vulnerable when the Taliban took over. And we were desperate to get those people to safety. Um, many thousands were left behind. Uh, and the, the, the government ran such a chaotic operation that we're not sure that they ever prioritised the right people or even got, safe, you know, got people to safety who should have been brought to safety at all. So that's why this matters, because we just need to get to the truth. Is it the action or the denial of action that is angering you? Would you be satisfied if the Prime Minister, for example, came out and said, look, actually, yes, I did personally sanction that, but it wasn't using any government resources, the plane was paid for using donations, I just gave it clearance to take off. Would that be OK with you? Or is it the fact that you think he did this, he just doesn't want to admit it? I think they should all just hold up their hands and say, this is what we did, and this was our judgment. We thought that it was more important to have an aeroplane, uh, uh, this aeroplane landing and, and supported than any other aeroplane. And, and OK, fine, I, I might disagree with them. I might say, look, here's a list of 134 people from, uh, who are connected to my constituency in the Rwanda, who, uh, some of whom are still in hiding um, in Taliban-run Afghanistan at the moment and are desperate to get home. Um, so I disagree with you, but fair enough, you've come, you've come clean. But the problem we've got now is either Lord Goldsmith, and he's a Conservative member of the House of Lords and, and Foreign Office Minister, either he and his office have been lying, or Trudy Harrison, the Prime Minister's uh, bag carrier, a uh, Conservative MP and per per Parliamentary Private Secretary, is lying, or the Prime Minister is lying, or all the officials are lying. Y you know, you just have to take your pick. Yeah, Penn Farthing, who runs the animal charity at the centre of all of this, in his own submission to the Foreign Affairs Committee, said, let me make it abundantly clear, uh, no HMG capacity was used to transport any an animals, none. Mr Farthing said he and his animals did not enter Kabul airport through the gate controlled by British soldiers. He also said it was American, not British soldiers, who helped load animals onto a flight and that he himself had chartered, paid for donations. He also went on to say that a lot of his staff didn't actually leave from Kabul airport to the UK. They had to escape into Pakistan. So it, it doesn't sound like well, they got too much help for, uh, from the British government. Uh, well, no, but, uh, but it now looks from these emails that, um, uh, that I think you have that uh, Trudy Harrison, supposedly on behalf of her boss, the Prime Minister, was approaching other organisations for donations to help Ben Farthing. The, these are the emails to Just Virgin Atlantic where she said relevant permissions yeah. would be fast-tracked in government. Exactly. So, I mean, I don't know what that means. If, if, you're, if you're writing and, and everybody knows that you are the, the bad carrier to the Prime Minister and you work in Downing Street, 
then I think people would assume that the Prime Minister is on top of that uh, and behind it. That's that, that's the working assumption. So now it is possible that maybe Trudy, who incidentally I like as a person, um, uh, I, 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 but it's perfectly possible that she was just overplaying her hand. But in which case she should just say that, come out in public and say, "I'm really sorry. Look, I kind of, I kind of." overstated the case and I hadn't ever really so, spoken so to So how do we get to the bottom of this? Is it is it another investigation? I lose track of how many investigations that have begun over the last few weeks. Is that is that what you want to see? I know, look, um, I think voters in the country must be sick to the back teeth of all of this, if I'm honest. Um, a lot of people have decided that he's a liar. When I went to the rugby last week in Ferndale, no, two weeks ago, I mean, basically everybody was saying, Boris out, Boris out, Boris out. And, hey, and hey look, I, match, well, I do have to come back at that. I was in Wolverhampton yesterday, which is a Conservative seat, Conservative South West, and so many people backing the Prime Minister and saying on the bigger decisions, he is getting things right, things that affect their life, like helping their okay. business to stay afloat over the pandemic. These, okay. these little so, matters so, so they just... see as a Westminster thing, they don't really see them affecting them in Wolverhampton. Oh. Well, I'm, I, I'm not so sure. Well, that's not been my experience. We're, we're going to have to agree to... Um, we're going to have to agree to differ on that. Sorry. Um, uh, we're going to have to agree to differ on that. But the point I was going to make was, I think people really care about the cost of living crisis, the fact that, you know, um, energy bills are... We've still got you, but, don't worry. Yes, sorry. Um, I think people really care about um, the cost of living crisis, energy bills going up, um, you know, six million people on the, uh, on, the wait on waiting list uh, uh, operations and, you know, cancer catch up and, and all the rest of it. Yes, those are the things they really care about. They're worried about what's happening in Ukraine. But the problem is that the prime minister's moral authority is now so completely and utterly shot that he cannot lead this country. The, you know, the government's in paralysis. He's not, he's not answering, he's not leading on um, what's happening in, in Ukraine. Um, I think you had a, a, a minister, a former Finnish prime minister on earlier today who just laughed when you asked whether he's leading on that. And that's because he's tied up with all of this. And, and, and I, you, you may be right that some voters don't care about it. But the moment you start saying that voters don't care about standards in public life, that is just an excuse for bad behaviour. OK, Chris Bryant, on that note, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for coming on here to Sky News this afternoon. Really appreciate your time.